Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to show you small improvements you can make to your game to save a bit of performance. These tips are general and can be applied to any 3D scene within any game engine or 3D software but for demonstration I'm going to use Blender and Unity. So let's get started. Tip number one. Do not use multiple meshes and textures for a single model. If your model is made of separate meshes each of those parts are going to issue a render call. For example, in this model, I only want the magazine clip to move separately, so there's no point in having the other parts as separate meshes. And in Blender, I can join them by selecting all of them and hitting Ctrl J. By merging these meshes together, we reduce the render calls and therefore save a bit of performance. Now, this mesh is still using three separate materials with three separate textures, and usually the less textures fetched, the better performance on the fragment shader. So if you don't need your textures to be separate, you can just put them in one. I'm gonna separate the meshes we just joined so that I can see each of their UV maps. You can UV unwrap the joint mesh and bake the textures into the new UV map, or you can join the existing UV maps together, which is what I'll do here. To do that, Duplicate the model once for baking the texture to, and rename the UV maps of one of these copies so they're no more linked, so that we can edit them separately. Select each part of the model and position the UV map so that they're not overlapping. Then you can join the meshes back together and that'll join the UV maps as well. From here you can export the UV map and use a photo editing software to texture it, but I'm going to show you how to bake the texture in Blender. So join the meshes on the original copy as well. Give the duplicate a new material with an image texture in it. Create a new texture with good resolution so it can fit all the textures we're baking into it. Now to bake the texture, change the original meshes shader to diffuse. Position both meshes in the same position. Find bake in the render tab and select diffuse in the bake type and only check color. Then check selected to active and then select the original mesh first and then the duplicate so that it's the active selection and then click bake. And now we have merged separate meshes and separate textures together. Tip number two. Do not use detailed meshes to cast shadows. Cast shadows, you don't need most of the details on the surface of the model, but the render pipeline will calculate the shadows using all those details, and it's a waste of performance. Instead, you can use a shadow proxy, which is a mesh with only enough geometry needed to cast a similar shadow. In Blender, you can create low poly versions of your mesh with different techniques, but one that I find very easy to use is Convex Hall. Just select some geometry and go to Mesh, Convex Hall. And you can delete the extra details altogether. And the shadow casted by these meshes are almost identical, even though their triangle count differs so much. If your model has LODs, you can use an LOD with enough detail for shadow as your shadow proxy. By default, each mesh casts its own shadow, which means when the camera is close, we're casting shadow with a high poly mesh. To make a shadow proxy, duplicate the low poly mesh in your LOD group and rename it to shadow proxy, and set it to only cast shadow without being rendered. And then select all of the LODs and turn off their shadows. This way, no matter which LOD is currently shown, the shadow is always cast by the low poly mesh. You can use shadow proxies for animated characters as well as for the entire level. Tip number three, do not render multiple cameras at a time. So there are times where you need to render with multiple cameras, like when you need a render texture of your security cameras. But in most cases, one camera is all needed. For example, you can use camera stacking to render some layers always on top or to exclude a layer from post-processing. But it's bad practice and the same result can be achieved with one camera. For example, to render this weapon on top so it doesn't clip into walls, 
we can render it with custom passes. And to do this in scriptable render pipelines, it's actually fairly simple. I have this game object in its own layer and in the URP render pipeline asset, I'm going to remove it from the main render pass. And then I'm going to add a render object feature for this layer for when the object is behind something. Check the depth and set it to greater, which means when this object is behind other objects. And then add another render object for when it's in front of objects. And this time you don't even need to overwrite the default depth. And now this weapon is always rendered on top. And for the fourth and final tip, do not get carried away with texture quality. It's easy to get carried away and use 4K textures and everything, and people usually overlook the impact of it. It's a great waste of performance and disk space. The impact of high resolution textures on performance is so much compared to its significance for the overall visual quality of the game. I can guarantee you that for most objects in your game, a 4K texture will look the same as a 512 by 512 pixel texture. Most engines use MIP mapping by default, which is like LOD for textures. But even though a 4K texture is still a waste of disk space and also performance, so just, just don't.